Where did you get the idea to do the office hours project you've been doing these last few months? You know what? I, I, it's, <laughs> I'm glad that you noticed that because I'm not sure anybody else has. It's, it's, a, it's an idea I've had for a long time uh, where I thought it would be interesting. I always wondered if there were people who I wanted to talk to, like what if they had office hours, just like a professor had office hours, and I could just go in there and ask them a question. And, I, and it didn't exist, and I said, well, maybe I should do that. Um, not and, and, and hold office hours with some really interesting people and, because I think there are a lot of folks out there in the world who want to talk to these folks and I sure would want to talk to them and so I just decided to do it and the extraordinary thing about this world that we live in now is that I mean essentially for no cost I was able to do what's a set what's amounts to a radio talk show that's available across the world I mean, it's just incredible. Soon we will have superior automation taking over most of white-collar jobs, just as mm. most blue-collar jobs have been automated, or even when yeah. computers will start intruding into domains that today we believe are the exclusive realm of human creativity. Right. What are the best strategies to maintain a sense of purpose in the lives of billions who won't feel they can have any impact? How will yeah. the hum yeah, wait, wait, just a second. Uh, how will the human condition be impacted? The very definition of what it means to be human. Yeah, it's a really interesting question, and and I, I guess the the nerd in me wants to question the premise of the question. All right. Uh, I mean, that, there, there's a there's a there's a notion in in economics what's that's called the lump of labor fallacy. You know, like lump a lump of something. Right. The lump of labor fallacy. Which basically says that we sometimes we think that um, all the jobs that there are are right now, and any time a job is lost through automation or moving to a low cost preserve, that it's basically we have it's just like we have this finite number of jobs out there to do, and if we lose any, then someone's going to suffer, and that's proven just flatly wrong. So there are blue, quote unquote blue collar jobs in here in the United States. It's just that. There are far fewer of them than there were 50 years ago. And those blue collar jobs are really different. It's not a bunch of 58 year old white men in blue shirts with grease on them turning the same screw the same way. It is a 28 year old woman with an associate, well, here, a two year degree here in the States, an associate's degree programming things on a computer. How much do you think motivation is, is a need to keep up with those around you versus an internal drive to accomplish things? It's a great question. It's both. Um, I mean, human beings have a mix of human beings have a mix of motives. Uh, we have, I mean, very complex set of motives. We do things for biological reasons, and we we also respond to rewards and punishments in our environment. That's a bi that's a big part of who we are. So, if you say to me, um, "I'll give you a thousand dollars for extending this interview for another fifteen minutes," I'll probably go, I'll probably go another fifteen minutes, okay? <laughs> you know? Right. Uh, and this idea of keeping up is one of those kinds of motivators. And human beings are absolutely concerned about status. We're concerned about how we rate relative to someone else. Um, that I think, in some ways, that that quest very rarely leads to any satisfaction because you can always you're always you're always going to find someone who is. Um, higher status than you are, whatever your metric for status is. Right. You know, the other thing we have to recognize is that human beings also have this other motivator. We do, oh, we also do things because they're interesting, because they're fulfilling, because they matter to us, because they contribute to a world. Yeah. How can he use the energy, this know-how, the motivation to make the world better? Not in a philosophical sense, um, but trying to improve things not for ourselves, but also for other people sounds to me that he's getting at this this concept I, I, it, what, what he's describing in a way as I hear it is a, is a concept of service that is being of service it, it, um, is the goal in itself can be a motivator and that is absolutely the case uh, there is a lot there is a lot of evidence of that 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 is an extraordinarily that that can be an extraordinarily powerful motivator and what's interesting given the previous question Unlike status, it can actually lead to both depth and endurance of, of well-being. That when people actually serve others, help others, improve the lot of others, 
they actually do experience a rise in subjective well-being. There's no question about it. Okay, so what do you think are the biggest um, barriers when it comes to implementing this kind of the results you know we, we already have into actual businesses? I think it's a, I think it's a mix of things. Um, I think there are a lot of barriers. In, inside of organizations. One of them is that these, these kinds of, you know, again, when I talk, these certain kinds of motivators that can have a harmful effect on creative and conceptual work, what I call if-then motivators, if you do this, then you get that, um, those, are, those can be devastating to higher order work. Right. What the problem is, is that those if-then motivators can be effective in the short term. That is, people will respond to them in the short run, so they often will have um, if people care only about very, very short increments of time, then sometimes they can be effective. So if you're a sales manager and want to get your sales numbers up by the end of the month, give people a huge bonus for closing deals by the end of the month. Right. You'll hit your numbers. You'll hit your numbers. Uh, you, you might do all kinds of collateral damage in the long run, but you'll hit your numbers. I was wondering if in the meantime you've found some new research, some new stuff you'd like to, uh, you know, uh, study upon and share. We see this over. We see this over and over again. That um, that you know, there's a lot of there's a just a huge accumulation of evidence out there that it's possible that that motivation is more complex, uh, more complicated, but also in many cases more noble than we tend to give it credit for. That human beings are very interesting creatures. We, we do things not only to survive, we do things not only to get rewards and punishments, but we do things for other higher, deeper reasons. And if we forget that, then I think we shortchange ourselves, we shortchange the people we're working with, and we shortchange the world by keeping certain talents um, hidden. 